Magandang gabi sa mga naming manonood. Ang Four Conversations Bawal Ang Bastos Safe Spaces Act ay magsisimula sa ilang sandali lamang. Good evening to our beloved viewers. Four Conversations Bawal Ang Bastos Safe Spaces Act will begin in a few minutes. the stop and salute flag ceremony every first Monday of the month. Nakatapos ako ng pag-aaral kahit maaga akong nag-asawa. Tinaguyod ko mag-isa ang aking mga anak. Ayaw magpapatapos na ang mga anak. At pagiging isang cancer survivor ko for almost 15 years. Ay nakapagpatapos ng apat na anak yung trabaho ko dahil ito ang binubuhay sa pamilya ko. Patuloy ang pag-aaral ng aking mga anak hanggang sa kuliyo. Naibibigay ko po lahat ng pangangilang ng aking anak at ng aking pamilya. Binubuhay ko lang po ang isa kaysa ang anak. Siyempre, yung pagkakaroon ko ng maki. Uh, Nine-year-old girl. Ay, ah, pagkakaroon ko ng tatlong malulusog at matatalinong anak na nakapagtap nakapagtapos lahat sila at may magagandang trabaho. Makatapos ang pag-aaral kasi laki kami sa hirap. Pag hindi nga lang laki kami sa hirap talaga. So kung ten kami, ako lang talaga nakatapos sa akin making my parents proud. Siguro hindi lang siya sa pagiging babae, siguro sa pagiging muslima, which is I'm a Muslim woman. Masaya ako na nakapagtrabaho ako sa NPDC without, ano ba to, yung hesitation nila na paglapit sa akin, yung parang hindi naging hindrance yung religion ko para magkaroon kami ng magandang bond. The reason behind it is to promote nationalism and patriotism and respect for the flag. So there are a lot of um, government agencies na nag-attend nitong activity na to and a lot of people have been praising the activity because it made them more aware about well about love of country and love of flag. Bilang isang naitay, gusto kong uh, maramdaman ng, ng anak ko na kompleto sila kahit pero kulang. Hindi tisa ko yung bumasok ng ngaga para lang makapasok. River. Pasalan ko. Limang anak. No? Nabubuhay ko. Ako lang mag-isa sa trabaho ko kung ganito. Sa magulang ko, tinutulungan ko. Kahit limang anak ako, tumutulong ka ako sa magulang ko. Making her feel the most of her life and yung pagiging kid niya napainit sa akin at sa ngayon ako yung napaka swerteng swerte sa buhay dahil sa kanya nagkaroon ako ng anak ng dalawang anak na babae at napagtapos ko rin sila ng pag-aaral kasi nakakapagtrabaho ako sa paraang gusto ko at masaya ko at nakakatulong ako or natutulungan ko ang family ko especially um, broadest moment maybe for that specific activity um, is when the, especially for this um, month of March, when we honored um, four women. Um, most of them um, were very um, deeply affected by how we honored them by giving the Philippine flag. So for me, um, making this kind of change, making this kind of activity that honors a lot of people, not just women, um, is a good start to promote nationalism and love of country. The National Parks Development Committee, with all the oneness ng liwasan, will always be your ally in pushing for women empowerment and gender equality. So join us this month of March and witness some of our great activities for one and oneness as you visit Luneta. Ikaw at ako, one ng liwasan. Ako, 
Magandang gabi po muli sa aming mga mahal na manonood. Ang Park Conversations Bawal Ang Bastos Safe Spaces Act ay magsisimula sa ilang sandali lamang. Good evening to our beloved viewers. Park Conversations Bawal Ang Bastos Safe Spaces Act will begin in a few minutes. Good evening everyone. Magandang gabi po. Welcome to Park Conversations Bawalang Bastos Safe Spaces Act 
or Republic Act 11313, brought to you by the National Parks Development Committee and the Department of Tourism. Before we begin our talk, we would like to share a few reminders for all our viewers. This Park Conversations webisode is streaming live on our Facebook page, npdc.ph, and will be available on demand after the live discussion. We encourage everyone to share tonight's webinar with your friends on social media and use the hashtags, hashtag Park Conversations, hashtag Women Make Change, and hashtag National Women's Month. We'd also love to hear from you during the live discussion. Gusto naming marinig ang inyong comments at makita ang inyong mga reactions. At kung kayo ay may mga tanong para sa ating speaker, maaari ninyo itong iparating sa amin sa pamamagitan ng Q&A button na matatagpuan sa ibabang bahagi ng inyong screen. Para naman sa ating mga viewers sa Facebook, maaari ninyong i-comment ang inyong mga katanungan sa live video na ito. Sisikapin naming masagot ang lahat ng inyong mga katanungan sa nakatakdang oras para sa webinar. At panghuli, yun lamang mga makakakumpleto sa pagsagot ng ating online survey form ang makakatanggap ng copy ng kanilang digital certificate. Kaya abangan po ninyo sa chat box at comments section ang online survey link na aming ipopost. Please review your entry details, lalo na po ang inyong pangalan before hitting submit button dahil ito po ang aming ilalagay sa inyong digital certificate. And that's it for the reminders. Muli, welcome to the 17th webisode of Park Conversations entitled Bawalang Bastos Safe Spaces Act or ang RA11313. Ayon sa isang SWS survey na isinagawa sa Barangay Payatas at Bagong Silangan sa Quezon City noong February 2016, 88% of women ages 18 to 24 ay naka-experience na ng sexual harassment habang ang mga babae na 12 to 55 years old and above ay naka-experience ng wolf whistling at cat calling. 34% naman ng mga babae ang nakaranas ng sinasabing worst forms of sexual harassment, katulad ng flashing, public masturbation, at groping. Sa datos naman ng UN Women Global da Database, nitong nakaraang labing dalawang buwan, 5.5% ng mga kababaihan ang nakararanas ng tinatawag na physical and or sexual intimate partner violence na maaaring napalala ng community lockdown sa iba't ibang bahagi ng mundo dahil sa COVID-19 pandemic. Mga kapwa, pa, mga kapwa kuwana, paano ba natin mapuprotektahan ang ating mga sarili laban sa iba't ibang uri ng mga harassment at ano-ano kaya ang maaaring maging karampatang parusa para sa mga offenders? Together, let us explore the answer to these important questions and concerns as we are joined in tonight's Park Conversations by Attorney Mercedes K. Alvarez. Attorney Mercedes K. Alvarez is a lawyer and former three-term congresswoman of the 6th District of Negros Occidental. During her last term, she was elected Deputy Speaker a first for her province and also the youngest in the 17th Congress. Attorney Alvarez studied law at the University of St. LaSalle. She also holds a master's degree in rural development from the Central Philippines State University and was confirmed, conferred with a doctorate degree in humanities honoris causa by the same university. Additionally, she finished her master's degree in National Security Administration on a full scholarship, winning the bronze medal for best thesis. Attorney Alvarez is a commissioned reserve officer of the Philippine Army with, a ra with the rank of Lieutenant Colonel and currently serves as Chief of Staff to Congressman 
Genaro Alvarez Jr. of the 6th District of Negros Occidental. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's welcome our esteemed resource speaker to Park Conversations, a military wife and mom to the adorable twins, Francis and Asher, Attorney Mercedes K. Alvarez. Attorney, maayong gabi. Uh, maayong gabi sa inyong atanan, especially to my fellow Ilonggos here in the Visayas and all over the country. Um, of course, um, good evening to everyone from the Chicks area, or this is uh, the popular name for our district here in the 6th District of Negros Occidental. Chicks stands for our 6th uh, LGU, specifically Kanduni, Hinubaan, Ilog, Kawayan, Kabankalan, and Sipalay. So thank you very much um, to the National Parks Development Committee, especially to our Executive Director, Ma'am Cecil Romero, for inviting me to be your resource speaker tonight. And belated happy birthday to our Executive Director. I would also like to thank my dear friend, Attorney Dubal, for inviting me as well. So I will try my best to be very brief or else I will be joining you for dinner tonight. And pasensya na lang po, alam ko po medyo may umiiyak na bata sa background. Alam niyo po kasi six months po na, six months na po yung babies ko at saka kambal po pa sila. So medyo double the everything, double the ingay, double the gastos. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to share on screen our a PowerPoint presentation which I will be sharing also to our National Parks Committee so uh, para po magamit naman po ng ibang tao or kung gusto nila nila pag-aralan po yung 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 slides. Okay. Can every uh, naririnig po ba ako? <laughs> yes po attorney, loud and thank, clear. Thank you so much. So, uh quite simply the Safe Spaces Act or Bawal Bastos Law is based on the principle of respect, dignity, equality, security, and safety. Uh, of course, the name of the law is Safe Spaces Act or Republic Act 11313. So this law is uh, closely related to the first Anti-Sexual Harassment Act of 1995. The safe spaces or the term safe spaces only used to mean private property. But when the 1995 law came out, safe spaces were expanded to the public domain in work and in educational and training facilities. The new law now expands safe spaces even further. Now it covers public spaces like streets and malls and even cyberspace. And anyone can be an offender now. The old law covers acts done by superiors like an employer or a boss or a teacher. But the Safe Spaces Act now covers peer-to-peer -peer harassment as well as subordinate to superior harassment. Any person can now be a victim, not only women, but also men, LGBT, and even children. They are all protected by the Safe Spaces Act. In the old law, uh, dapat po may kapalit or may exchange or a condition. Like in the workplace, it could be a promotion or employment, or even in the school setting, it could be for a passing grade or a granting of honors or payment of allowance. As stated earlier, uh, nasabi na po about the SWS survey conducted in 2016 that 88% of women experience sexual harassment in the streets. And of course, the common cases are uh, catcalling or whiff, wolf whistling, yung sisigaw ka, uy, sexy, mga ganun, ganun. Tapos, and of course, half of these cases already involve stalking, yung robbing or touching, yung pasimple lang na pa ano-ano ng uh, uh, mga, like for example, oh, sige, sabihin, yung term na lang po, yung puwet, medyo pasimple lang dyan, or medyo rub yung arms against the breast, mga ganyan. And it also includes mga indecent gestures, exhibitionism, and public masturbation. Uh, so the law covers these kinds of gender-based sexual harassments, or in short, GBSH. One, there is street harassment. Two, public spaces harassment. Third, online harassment. Fourth, workplace harassment and school harassment. So let us start with gender-based streets and public spaces harassments. This includes the following acts. 
catcalling, wolf whistling, unwanted invitations, misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist slurs, persistent uninvited comments or gestures on a person's appearance, relentless requests for personal details, statements of sexual comments and suggestions, public masturbation or flashing of private parts, groping, or any advances, whether verbal or physical. Ito po yung mga acts, dapat po, these are unwanted and has threatened one's sense of personal space and physical safety. And of course, dapat committed po in public spaces. Yung keyword po dito is that it is unwanted. Dapat po, ayaw po ng biktima yung ginawa po sa kanya. So, of course, uh, this again, these are committed in public spaces. So, ano po yung mga public spaces na sinasabi sa law? These are alleys, roads, sidewalks, parks, buildings, schools, churches, restaurants, malls, public washrooms, bars, internet shops, public markets, transportation terminals, or public utility vehicles. But there are also places that are in a special category, and these are privately owned properties that are open to the public, such as restaurants and cafes, bars and clubs, resorts and water parks, hotels and casinos, cinemas, malls, buildings, and other privately owned places open to the public. The owners of these spaces are required to do the following. They should adopt a zero tolerance policy against GBSH. Second, they should provide assistance to victims by coordinating with the local police authorities immediately after a GBSH is reported. Third, they should make CCTV footage available when ordered by the court. And fourth, they should provide a safe gender sensitive environment to encourage victims to report GBSH at the first insta instance. Ehemplo lang po, like for example, kung nasa bar, may babae po na naharas, uh, it would be best that the person in the establishment who she can report the act, dapat po siguro ay babae ang yung pag-reportan niya. Since the victim may most, may most likely be more comfortable to a fellow woman. So in other words, we should make the environment conducive to openness and safety. Fifth duty of this owner, uh, owners are to install in their business establishments clearly visible warning signs against GBSH, including the anti-sexual harassment hotline number in bold letters. And six, these owners shall designate at least one anti-sexual harassment officer to receive gender-based sexual harassment complaints. Usually po yung security guard na lang po yung ina-assign as a anti-sexual harassment officer, and this does not require additional personnel, any existing employee can be designated as an anti-sexual harassment officer. Also, um, uh, talking about security guards, uh, security guards may also be deputized to apprehend perpetrators caught in flagrante delicto or caught in the act and are immediately required to coordinate with the local authorities. GBSH can also be uh, committed in PUVs or public utility vehicles. So, kung meron po nangyari na GBSH and PUVs, uh, the LTO may cancel the license of these perpetrators and the LTFRB may also suspend or revoke the franchise of transportation operators. Of course, this covers transport services such as ANCAS or GRAB. Um, GBSH can also be uh, committed by minors. So what will happen is that if committed by minors, the DSWD shall take necessary disciplinary measures as provided for Republic Act 9344 or the Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act of 2006. The law lists the duties of several government agencies. Um, of course, first are the local government units or the LGUs. Uh, the LGUs are mandated to pass an or ordinance which will localize the applic applicability of the law, disseminate or post in conspicuous places a copy of the law and the corresponding ordinance, provide measures to prevent GBSH through information campaigns and anti-sexual harassment seminars. They also should discourage the public to, con to commit GBSH and impose fines. Also, they should create an anti-sexual harassment hotline. 
and coordinate with the DILG on the implementation of the law and to set up an anti-sexual harassment desk in all barangay and municipal or city halls. LGUs are also uh, mandated to set up CCTVs in major roads, alleys, and sidewalks in order to aid in the filing of cases and gathering of evidences. Um, the IRR also of, uh, excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> the IRR is, um, also provides that LGU should conduct safety audits on their duties every three years to assist the efficiency and effectivity of the implementation of the law. This, of course, should be multi-sectoral and participatory with um, consultations undertaken with schools, with the police, and the civil society organizations. Next, um, of course, the DILG uh, is mandated to inspect LGUs if they have posted a copy of the said law and the ordinance, and also to conduct uh, surveys and studies on the best practices of LGUs in implementing the law. Um, the DALG should also provide capacity building and training activities to build the capability of local government officials to implement the law in coordination with the PCW, the Local Government Academy, and the Development Academy of the Philippines. The DALG should also coordinate with the DSWD, the DOH, and the Philippine Council for Women, if necessary, for provision on proper psychological counseling support services for victims. So the main implementers of the law are the PCW, the DALG, and the DICT. They are responsible for overseeing the implementation of the law and formulation of policies that will ensure its strict implementation. Anti-sexual harassment officers. So the MMDA, for and or the PNP for other provinces and the Women and Children's Protection Desk have the authority to apprehend the perpetrators and enforce the law. They must also deputize its enforcers to be anti-sexual harassment enforcers or what we call the ASHEs. Uh, these uh, ASHEs can receive complaints on the street and immediately apprehend a perpetrator if caught in flagrante delicto. Of course, this quick apprehension elevates the acts mentioned, such as stalking, cat calling, or wolf whistling. It elevates these acts mentioned to be in the level of smoking or throwing away garbage anywhere. Diba? Uh, lately, um, kumahuli ka lang po na nagsusmoke like on the streets, huhulihin ka agad. Um, there is no need to file a complaint. There is no need to go first to the police station. Immediately, huhulihin ka. So, uh, itong Safe Spaces Act, it elevates those acts into the level of anti-smoking or throwing away garbage. Um, to continue, these ASHEs uh, are to keep a ledger of perpetrators for the purpose of determining if a perpetrator is a first-time, a second-time, or a third-time offender. Also, uh, the IRR, or the Implementing Rules and Regulations of the Safe Spaces Act, provides citizen's arrest. So a citizen's arrest is when any private person may arrest without need of a warrant under the following circumstances. One, when in his presence, the person to be arrested has committed, is actually committing, or is attempting to commit GBSH, and when GBSH has in fact just been committed. And of course, the second circumstance is that that private person has personal knowledge of the facts indicating that the person to be arrested has committed it. <clears throat> so what are the first, what are the penalties for GBSH in streets and public spaces? There are three degrees of the offenses. First degree offenses, kung babasahin po natin, eh, uh, makikita naman po sa streets, sa screen, kung ano po yung mga acts na ito, these are usually just words or just verbal verbal acts like cursing, wolf whistling, unwanted invitations, sexist slurs. Makikita lang po natin sa screen natin. Um, I really don't need to read everything kasi may, may time limit po tayo. But... Um, to sum it all up, these first-degree offenses only 
uh, involves words or like mga jokes, mga sexual jokes or like uh, um, nangungulit ng babae or nangungulit ng bakla. So these are first degree offenses. The penalties are, of course, you can see for the first offense, it's 1,000 pesos and 12 hours community service with gender sensitivity seminar. Kung second offense, it's 6 to 10, 10 days in prison or 3,000 pesos. For the third offense, it's 11 to 30 days in prison and 10,000 pesos. Um, for the second degree offenses, kung yung first degree po is more of words, kung sa second degree naman po, it's more of gestures or may actions na po talaga. So examples of this are making offensive body gestures at someone, exposing private parts for the sexual gratification of the perpetrator with the effect of demeaning, harassing, threatening, or intimidating the victim, flashing of private parts, public masturbation, groping, and similar lewd sexual actions. So the first offense, uh, the penalty is a fine of 10,000 pesos and 12-hour community service with gender sensitivity seminar. And for the second offense, it's 11 to 30 days in prison or 15,000 pesos. For the third offense, it's one month and one day to six months in prison and 20,000 pesos. For the third offenses, uh, this includes stalking or may kasama na pong hawak or may touching. So again, recap lang po. First degree is words or verbal. Second degree is uh, may actions na po na nangyayari. And for the third degree offenses, aside from stalking, yung mga sexual advances or gestures and statements mentioned previously, may kasama na pong touching, pinching, or brushing against the body of the offended person, or any form of touching, pinching, or brushing against the genitalia, face, arms, anus, groin, breast, inner thighs, or any part of the victim's body. So the penalties are, obviously po, mas mataas po yung penalties. Ko first offense, 11 to 30 days in prison, or 30,000 pesos with gender sensitivity seminar, Second offense is one month and one day to six months in prison or 50,000 pesos. And on the third offense is four months and one day to six months in prison or 100,000 pesos. So, um, natapos sa po yung sa streets and sa public spaces, nandito naman po tayo sa online harassment. <clears throat> Online harassments, um, these are acts that use basically uh, information and communications technology in terrorizing and intimidating victims through physical, psychological, and emotional threats, unwanted, sexual, misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist remarks and comments online, whether publicly or through direct and private messages. Um, third um, is invasion of the victim's privacy through cyber stalking and incessant messaging. Uh, fourth, uploading and sharing uh, without the consent of the victim any form of media that contains photos, voice, or video with sexual content. Also, any unauthorized recording and sharing of any of the victim's photos, videos, or any information online. Uh, next, also impersonating identities of victims online or posting lies about victims to harm their reputation or filing false abuse reports to online platforms to silence victims. May exam mga example po nito, usually makikita po natin yung mga comments on online sa mga comment section, ibang tao, like ipaparate kita or ang laki ng boobs mo or yung nagsishare po tayo ng mga sexy videos or intimate photos kahit po privately through messenger or through uh, uh, inbox lang uh, pwede na po tayo maging guilty of online harassment. So, primarily responsible for the implementation of Philippine laws on cybercrime is the PNP Anti-Cybercrime Group or PNP-ACG, um, which shall receive complaints and develop an online mechanism for reporting real-time gender-based online sexual harassment acts. And of course, they are mandated to apprehend perpetrators. 
also involved is the DICT's uh, Cyber Crime Investigation and Coordinating Center, which are mandated to coordinate with the PNP ACG in order to prepare appropriate and effective measures to monitor and penalize gender-based online sexual harassment. And of course, the DOJ is mandated to develop protocols and standards of gathering evidence and case buildup according to the implementing rules and regulation. How to file a case? So the DOJ, PNP, and NBI is in charge of the procedure and protocol for receiving complaints and address violations. A victim may approach the PNP and the NBI or the NBI, and these agencies will assist the, the victim in the case buildup. What are then, uh, what is the penalty for online GBSH? It is higher. Uh, makikita po natin na mas mataas po yung penalty because there is a degree of continuing shame on the part of the victim, especially if a photo or a video was uploaded or shared. Photos or videos or any information that is uploaded in, in the internet stays in cyberspace and, e and can be easily shared. So the repercussions po are more permanent for the victim. So the penalty is um, pression correctional in its medium period or a fine of not less than 100,000 to 500,000 pesos or both. If a juridical person commits online GBSH, its license or franchise shall be automatically deemed revoked and the person's liable shall be the officers. If it involves the broadcast media, also liable is the editor or reporter in the case of print media and the station manager, editor, and broadcaster. If the perpetrator is a foreigner, uh, he but shall be subjected to deportation proceedings and, of course, after serving sentence and payment of fines. Um, so we also have now what we call qualified GBSH or gender-based streets, public spaces, and online harassment, sexual harassment. When you say qualified, the penalties are heavier. Uh, so the penalty next higher will be applied if one, if uh, GBSH takes place in a common carrier or a public utility vehicle, uh, it is because the driver is in control of the, of the vehicle and the, if the victim is a passenger, uh, he or he is within an enclosed area which is controlled by the driver. Two, if the offended party is a minor a senior citizen or a person with disability or a breastfeeding mother nursing her child. So um, for example, po, uh, I myself is a breastfeeding mother. Uh, I have friends who are breastfeeding mothers as well. Na may na nakapag-experience po na there's one time a friend of mine was breastfeeding her child in public. Of course, nakakover nga po minsan, naka may meron pa siyang shawl. Pero bigla na lang may dumaan sa harap niya, humirit sa kanya, oh, pwede ba ako yung next? So, yun pa lang, uh, uh, gender-based sexual harassment na po yun. Third, if the offended party is diagnosed with a mental problem. Fourth, if the perpetrator is a member of the uniformed services such as the police and the armed forces of the Philippines and the act was perpetrated while the perpetrator was in uniform. Of course, uh, sa mga ganitong cases po, especially kung naka-uniform po, either the PNP or the AFP or the military, it has a more chilling effect on the victim because of the uniform. And fifth, if the act takes place in the premises of a government agency offering frontline services to the public and the perpetrator is a government employee, government employee. So, nandito na po tayo sa GBSH in the workplace environment. When you say workplace, this covers public and private, both the public and private sectors. So, this is committed between peers and those committed to a superior by a subordinate or a teacher by a student or to a trainer, trainer by a trainee. So, kung sa old anti-sexual harassment law, usually po, uh, it was it should be committed by a senior to a subordinate dahil po may moral ascendancy over the over the, the subordinate employee pero in this case po in the safe spaces act anyone po it can happen 
between peers. It can happen even to a superior officer being sexually harassed by a subordinate. Also, as earlier stated, under the old sexual harassment law, uh, sexual harassment in the workplace occurs when sexual favors are solicited in exchange for favorable employment conditions or refusal to do results in adverse condi working conditions. So, yung main distinction po between the old law and the new law is that in the old law, there must be an exchange or may kapalit. But in the new law, sexual harassment occurs when the perpetrator gives unwanted, unwelcome, and uninvited sexual remarks or actions against any person that uh, those uh, remarks or actions threatens the victim's sense of personal safety, space and safety. So the moment po that your personal safety or space is threatened by a colleague or a supervisor or a subordinate, then you can already have grounds to file a case. It, this can be done verbally, physically, or through the use of technology. Uh, yung in, importante lang po talaga that that act has a detrimental effect on the conditions of an individual's employment. In the IRR, uh, ano po yung sinasabi na workplaces? The IRR of the law states that this should include all sites, locations, spaces where work is being undertaken by an employee within or outside the premises of the usual place of business of the employer. So, what are the duties of the employers? Um, of course, this is very similar to the old sexual harassment law, but uh, let's review na lang po. In order to prevent, deter, or punish the performance of such acts, employers must, like the LGUs, must post a copy of the law. They should provide measures to prevent GBSH in the workplace, such as conducting anti-sexual harassment seminars. They should create a committee on decorum and investigation, or CODI, which we will be, will be discussing later. They should also provide and disseminate a code of conduct or workplace policy. Also, may mga duties din po yung mga employees and co-workers po natin. Um, they shall refrain from committing, obviously, they should refrain from, from committing acts of GBSH. They should discourage the conduct of GBSH in the workplace. They should provide emotional or social support to fellow employees who are victims. And fourth, they should report acts of GBSH witness in the workplace. Reports can be anonymous and this can constitute sufficient notice to the employer who shall thereafter verify and refer the matter to the CODI. So what are the liabilities of employers? Aside from the solidarity, solidarity liability under the old law, and in addition to the liabilities for committing acts of GBSH, employers may also be held responsible for non-implementation of their duties. They can be penalized with a fine of 5,000 to 10,000 pesos. Uh, and also not taking action on reported acts of GBSH committed in the workplace. Also, um, the DOLE for the private sector and the Civil Service Commission for the public se sector must, be, must uh, do a routine, expen routine inspection every year to ensure compliance of the law. In the public sector, a government employee may file an administrative complaint with the CSC in case of non-compliance of the duties of their employers or heads. Um, the IRR also states that this law, the Safe Spaces Act, also covers support for workers in the informal economy. So what, are the, what is the informal economy? Of course, this consists of independent, self-employed, small-scale producers and distributors of goods and services. The DOLE must, devo must develop guidelines for employers, uh, employees covered by the Kasambahay law in the informal economy and those employed in establishments where there are only 10 or few employees. Next, pa patapos na po tayo, nasa last part na po tayo. GBSH in schools or education and training institutions. This covers all public and private schools and uh, of course, the law mandates the school heads that they should designate an officer in charge to receive complaints regarding violations of the law. Uh, school heads should also ensure that the victims are provided with a gender sensitive environment 
that is both respectful to the victim's needs and conducive to truth telling. In cases wherein the victim doesn't want to file or doesn't request that the school take any action, the school should still promptly investigate to determine the veracity of such information or knowledge and take appropriate steps to resolve the situation. The school must also take immediate action to eliminate the same acts, prevent its recurrence and address their effects. If there is evidence, in other words, if there is evidence that there, or if it looks like that there is a harassment going on, it is incumbent upon the school to investigate. If the perpetrator is found to be guilty, the school has the right to strip the latter of his or her diploma from the or issue an expulsion order. The same as employers, um, school heads shall have the following duties. Of course, to post a copy of the law, to provide measures um, to prevent GBSH, like information campaigns. Uh, the school heads should also create a CODI. And of course, they should uh, provide and disseminate a code of conduct or a school policy against GBSH. In addition to the liability for committing acts of GBSH, um, principals, could, school heads, or any person who has authority, influence, or moral ascendancy over another may also be held responsible for non-implementation of their duties as well as failure to act on reported acts of GBSH in schools. And of course, what are the liability of students? Um, minor students uh, who are found to have committed acts of gender-based sexual harassment shall only be held liable for administrative sanctions by the school as stated in the school handbook. Of course, the DEPED, the CHED, and the TESTA shall conduct regular spontaneous inspections to ensure compliance of school heads with the obligations under the law. Common provisions uh, in GBSH in the workplace and schools. Um, employers and school heads, of course, as stated earlier, they should develop a code of conduct this is in consultation with workers or the student council. This code of conduct shall define GBSH, its coverage, forms, classifications, the appropriate penalties, when and where committed and by whom. It shall specify the procedures in filing of cases, investigation and resolution and appeal. It shall specify the functions, responsibilities, composition and qualifications of the members of the CODI or the Committee on Decorum and Investigation, including, of course, the penalties in case of non-performance or inadequate performance of functions. So, excuse me. Um, in the workplace, the CODI, of course, must have at least one representative from the management, from the employees in all ranks, and must be selected among workers by a vote. In schools, the CODI must have at least one representative from the administration, from the trainers or instructors, from the students and the parents as well. It must also have equal representation of persons of diverse sexual orientation, gender identity, and or expression. And the school head must also assign an alternate. The CODIS must be headed by a woman and not less than half of its members shall be women. Members should be impartial and not be connected or related to uh, the alleged perpetrator within the fourth civil degree of consanguinity or affinity and have no prior record of involvement as a respondent, defendant, or accused in any sexual harassment case. In case the member is related, he or she must inhibit. Of course, the CODI must observe due process and investigate and decide on written complaints within 10 working days or less. So the common, oh, sorry. Okay, that's uh, about the CODI. Um, these are the common provisions for all cases of GBSH. Uh, confidentiality, the rights of the victim and the accused, especially if it is a minor, shall be recognized. Records are confidential. Restraining orders, the courts may issue a temporary restraining order so the perpetrator can stay away from the victim or can stay away from the school or from the uh, work site or any specified place. The LGU, the DSWD, the DOH, and the PCW 
may provide remedies such as psychological services uh, if needed, and even the LGUs can partner with private entities for this purpose. Of course, LGUs can impose heavier penalties in their ordinances. Who are exempted from the Safe Spaces Act? Um, exempted are legitimate expressions of indigenous culture and tradition, such as wearing of traditional attires or tribes of tribes or clan that may show partial nudity, provided that it does not discriminate against women, girls, and persons of diverse sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. And of course, exempted are breastfeeding in public. So uh, thank you very much for your time uh, and you, for your attention. At least hindi po tayo umabot sa alas 7, unless mapapadala po kayo ng dinner po dito sa akin. So to end, a piece of advice for everyone. Uh, let us just be prudent in all our actions. So thank you very much and thank you, Mayan, our moderator. Thank you very much po, Attorney Alvarez. Ayan, may question lamang po ang ating mga um, viewers po, ano? Kasi kanina nag, um, nag gather po tayo ng mga questions na. So ito po yung ilan sa mga katanungan nila. So first, while namamasyal sa mall, may lalaking gustong makipagkilala and I am not interested. He keeps on following me and said that he would not stop until I give him my number. Is that covered po nung ating um, Safe Spaces Act? Um, yes, because uh, as stated in the law, um, stalking po is uh, already defined and it is considered as a gender-based uh, sexual harassment in public spaces. And especially kung sa mall po, uh, cons um, consider na rin po siya na public space. So yes, uh, in this case, uh, it is uh, violative of one's uh, safe space. Mm -hmm. Okay, po. Um, another question po, attorney. How about yung nanghihipo ng puwet sa LRT or MRT? Kasi kapag siksikan po, di ba, hindi mo may iwasan minsan, napapa oops, napapapunta ka doon sa kabilang, <laughs> sa kabilang lane. Ayan. So is that penalized? If yes, what is the penalty po? Um, well, uh, naalala ko po yun before nakapagsakay din ako sa MRT. Uh, kailangan ko yata tumakbo sa harap para, di ba, yung pinakaharap Opo. yata na ano, is para sa mga, sa mga babae. Pae. Minsan, kung maalanganin ka, so dito ka na lang sa bilikod. So, yes, uh, in those cases na nahihipuan po yung babae uh, in a public utility vehicle, uh, liable po sila because nakastate po sa Safe Spaces Act po natin that groping is considered, groping meaning, oh, nahipuan ka, is considered as a gender-based uh, streets and public spaces sexual harassment. So, uh, yung penalty po, um, if in the first offense, it is punished by uh, imprisonment of 11 to 30 days or a fine of 30,000 pesos. And kung second offense na rin po, uh, mas higher po imprisonment, which is one month to six months and or a fine of 50,000 pesos. And kung mahilig ka talaga maghipo ng babae, so third offense or more, uh, so it's a, uh, uh, tawag dito, it's an arresto mayor na in its maximum period the imprisonment and a fine of 100,000 pesos. Okay, kaya dyan sa mga mahilig mang hipo-hipo dyan, <laughs> ayan, nabanggit po ni attorney mga penalties. Itago na lang po yung kamay sa loob ng <laughs> bulsa. <pocket. laughs> bulsa. Okay, next question po, attorney. My boss asked me to go see him at his office. When I entered, he locked the door and said he wanted to chat and get to know me better. I was uncomfortable when he locked the door and felt trapped and harassed even if, even if he did not touch me. Is that considered po sexual harassment? Um... In my opinion, yes, it is uh, considered as uh, sexual harassment because the conduct is unwelcome and parang it creates an intimidating or a hostile environment for me. So I, I would like to believe that it is considered as a gender-based sexual harassment in the workplace. 
Mm-hmm. Okay po. Um, paalala lang po ulit sa ating mga viewers sa Facebook and sa Zoom. Pwede pa rin po kayong mag-submit ng inyong mga questions po. Ayan, just leave it sa ating Q&A button or sa comment section po ng ating Facebook live video. Um, here's another question po, attorney. Um, ito po. A co-worker is fond of making sexual gestures with common objects and passing it off as a joke, such as putting a ball pen through a donut hole or groping and or stroking a banana and showing it to us. Can that be considered sexual harassment? Yung mga pabirong ano lang, yung may nakita, meron tayong mga kaibigan na ganyan, yung mga imaginative, mga may mag-green jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Sana mag-imagine na lang siya sa bahay niya. Huwag naman sa work place, di ba? Ayan. So, uh, yeah. Ayun po. So, can that, so, because, okay, okay, can that uh, sorry. be considered po as sexual harassment po? Uh, in my opinion, yes. Because uh, uh, his actions or her actions is very sexual in nature. And sometimes uh, if it affects the dignity of a person of or a co-worker, Uh, which is uh, the key word, which is unwelcome or mm-hmm. unreasonable and offensive to the recipient, whether done verbally, physically, or again, like through the use of technology, it can be considered as GBSH. So I'd like to think that, yes, uh, mm-hmm. it is considered as sexual harassment. Yeah, friends, imaginative friends. Ayan, iwasan na po natin yung mga ganong klase ng jokes. Ayan. Stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> Another question po, attorney. A co-worker made this comment when he saw me wearing a skirt. Ang sexy mo naman. Di ulit ako makakatulog nito mamaya. <laughs> Ayan. Is that statement punishable? Ito yung mga medyo nakakailang na mga klase ng remarks and ano po eh, mga comments. Um, if it is unwelcome or pervasive or let's say it creates an intimidating environment, I'd like to believe those kinds of comments uh, can be considered as, as sexual harassment. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay po. And is this punishable po? Kay, kasama, kasama po ito dun sa binanggit nyo kanina, no? yung mga verbal na yes. klase ng harassment. Ayan. Another question po, attorney. My la- lady boss touched and cares my biceps saying ang tigas ng muscles mo. Ay, mga babae po talaga mahilig mag... Mm! <laughs> <laughs> ang ganda ng biceps mo. Yung mga ganyan po talagang mga girls minsan eh. This incident was repeated several times. Can I charge her with sexual harassment? Um, as stated earlier, when we began, um, this uh, anybody can be a victim. Not only the women, but also men, uh, the LGBTQ community, and etc. And even children. So in this case, if uh, the victim feels that it was invasive or mm-hmm. the acts of the boss is unwanted or unwelcome, or he feels very intimidated or humiliated mm-hmm. by this environment then yes, the boss can be guilty of uh, sexual harassment in the workplace. Ayan. Okay po. So, medyo girls, mag-ingat din tayo sa ating yes. mga actions. Ayan, dahil hindi lang mga boys ang covered netong um, Safe Spaces Act na ito. Ano? Pati ma- lahat tayo covered neto. So, um, a question po, attorney, from our Facebook viewer. Ma'am, napasipol sa paghanga sa babae, matatawag po ba ito na sexual harassment? If the woman, kung yung babae po na, uh, na tama ba? Sorry, ilongga kasi so medyo ano ako sa Tagalog. Kung yung babae na sinip, tama ba, sinipulan, uh, <laughs> ayaw niya po or medyo na-offend po siya. Mm-hmm. So the mere act of catcalling or wolf whistling, is already considered as a form of gender-based sexual harassment. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yung i-point out ko lang po, uh, the law does not consider kung ano po yung intent ni, mm-hmm. kung ano po yung intent ng perpetrator. His intent is irrelevant. The mere fact na sumipol ka or sumigaw ka, oh, he's like, see, ganyan-ganyan, mm-hmm. patingin naman, no, oh, ganyan-ganyan, kahit uh, it's feeling mo parang pinipraise mo pa siya dahil nagandahan ka po talaga sa kanya. But if 
uh, unwanted, medyo na-offend yung babae, uh, he, she or he can report you to the police dahil unwanted po yung ginawa mo. Tama po. Ayan. Wala naman kasing ano yung uh, pagsipol ano po. Hindi naman siya parang ano na po. Pwede mong tunohan na, uy, itong pagsipol ko, ano to, paghanga to sa'yo, hindi to bastos. Hindi natin pwedeng Pero, lagyan yeah, ng... But at the, at the end of the day, parang depende po yan sa victim. Mm-hmm. Or depende din po sa tao. Kasi it could be na you wouldn't mind. It could mm-hmm. be na you won't be offended. May ibang babae naman siguro or lalaki na mas nagustuhan niya kasi feeling extra ganda niya, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, pero may iba din na medyo if eh, she felt na nabastos siya, so pwede ka po niya ma-report. Okay. Next question po, attorney. Kung magtatanong ang office mate ko na lalaki about my sex life, pwede ba siyang makasuhan dahil po doon sa pagtatanong niyang yun? Well, I think it depends. Baka close naman po kayo. <laughs> But of course, if again, if you feel na it's very invasive or unwarranted or unwelcoming na bigla ka na lang tinanong about your sex, wi- sex mm-hmm. life, then I believe, yes, uh, uh, he can be uh, complained of against GBSH. Okay po. Um, ito, meron... Wow, gusto ko tong question niya. Ako po ay nagtatrabaho sa Luneta bilang park attendant. Kapag ang park goer po ay nakita o narinig kong binabastos, ano ang pwede kong gawin maliban sa sitahin ang nambabastos? Uh, well, first, uh, na-discuss po earlier, actually, wala po siya sa safe spaces law itself, but it is in the implementing rules and regulations na a private citizen can do a citizen's arrest. Mm-hmm. So, the park attendant, kung nakita niya po, there, na, na-witness niya po yung pagbabastos, pwede niya po ma-arresto yung tao. But let's say, Uh, intimidated ka din po or ayaw mo din na ikaw talaga mag-aresto. So, the most prudent thing to do is to report it to the ASHE or the Anti-Sexual Harassment Enforcer. Usually po, mga police or mga security guards yung dinideputize. And then, uh, yun lang po, i-report po either in Metro Manila to, to the MMDA, kung wala po yung MMDA enforcers, to the police po. Especially the Women's and Children's Protection Desk. Ayan. Next po na question, attorney. Kung may coworker ako na nagpadala ng mala- malaswang meme sa Viber or Messenger, pwede po ba siyang kasuhan? Um, yes, kasi na-define na rin po sa sa Safe Spaces Safe Spaces Act na GBSH in the workplace can be done not only verbally or physically, but it can also be done through Uh, technology through instant messaging or anything. Anything that is uh, sexual in nature and is offensive or unwelcome can be uh, considered as GBSH. Okay po. Ito po, um, medyo current lang ito, no? The woman who was recently made famous by her live selling on Facebook, I noticed a lot of male viewers commenting on the size of her breasts. Is that sexual harassment already po? Kasi di ba, meron minsan yung nagla-live selling, pero yung nila-live selling nila, halimbawa, damit, ganyan. Pero parang iba naman yung nakikita ng mga viewers din kasi. So, is that um, already um, form of sexual harassment? Yung mga nagko-comment doon na kung ano-ano na lang po ang kinokomment, hindi na tungkol doon sa paninda? <laughs> well, Uh, like I said, um, it depends on the woman who was doing the live selling. Uh, but kung let's say kung magreklamo siya or offended siya dahil may nag-comment dahil uh, ganun nga uh, malaki yung boobs niya or stuff like that, um, yes, it can be a form of GBSH because it is a unwanted sexist remarks and comments online, yung mga comments po online is a form of uh, sexual harassment as well, which is defined and uh, penalized under the law. Mm-hmm. So for example, kung si, yung si seller, nakita niya po, tapos na-offend siya, 
uh, she can report those who are commenting. Mm-hmm. Okay po. So, ito po. Ang next question natin, if I had no intention whatsoever to offend the other person when I gave the remark or did the specific act, can I raise this as a defense? Ito na, para sa mga offenders natin na nagbabalak pang magdahilan. Ayan. Na hindi so, um, nila intention. Yeah. As stated earlier, the law does not take into consideration your your intention of uh, uh, so yung intention nyo po mm-hmm. of the perpetrator is irrelevant because what the law considered ay uh, yung kinoconsider po ng law is the feeling or yung reaction po ng receiver mm-hmm. of the act that you did so good faith is not a defense in safe spaces mm-hmm. Act. Mm-hmm. okay um another question po how about if I am a homosexual, male, or bakla, and may sumipol na mga lalaki, so would that also be considered sexual harassment? Um, again, if it is unwanted, or if the person feels that uh, uh, it is uh, uh, intrusive of his safe space, mm-hmm. then yes. Kahit po bakla, pwede po magreklamo. Ayan. Kasi nga po, nabanggit nga po kanina ni attorney na hindi lang girls ang covered and hindi lang din naman boys ang pwedeng maparusahan. Ayan. Lahat yes. tayo pwedeng maparusahan kung tayo ay may ginawang hindi rin naman talaga kanais-nais. Yes. Um, actually, kasi nakasulat talaga, it is clearly stated in the law, um, specifically in Section 4, that not only misogynistic statements but also transphobic, homophobic and sexist slurs can be considered as uh, a violation of uh, the safe spaces act. Okay po. Um siguro po ito attorney last question na po ano since magse 7 na din naman po. A coworker is always smelling my hair. Every time he gets close, inaamoy niya yung buhok ko. Is that sexual harassment and ano po yung pwedeng gawin nitong uh, ating nagtatanong po na viewer tungkol dito po. Dahil medyo uh, creepy yung inaamoy yung buhok mo po. Ano? Baka nagustuhan niya lang po yung shampoo mo. Bigyan mo <laughs> lang <ng> shampoo. <laughs> uh, of course, again, if you felt that your safe space is invaded by the act of smelling your hair at hindi naman po kayo talaga close na Oh, di ba? Nakakaasar naman talaga kung amuyin ka lang bigla yung buhok mo. Hindi naman kayo best friends. Hmm. So yes, uh, this sort of conduct committed in the workplace, which is again, if it is unwelcome and pervasive, and if it creates an intimidating atmosphere for you, then it is considered as a gender-based sexual harassment in the workplace. Or kahit hindi pa po sa workplace, let's say, may friend ka lang or nakita ka lang dyan sa labas ng bahay, trip niya, amoy niyo buhok mo the whole time. Yes, pwede mo siya mareklamo. Okay po. Ayan. So, para do sa ating viewer na nagtatanong, ayan, nandyan na po ang inyong kasagutan. Daghang salamat po, Attorney Alvarez, for joining us. And um, any final message po or final words para sa ating mga viewers for tonight? Uh, so, salamat, Gid. Uh, salamat din po sa inyo for your time and for your attention. Um, of course, uh, uh, at, at, uh, as earlier stated, let us just continue to be prudent in all our cha- actions. And of course, mm-hmm. let us practice the virtue of empathy. Uh, uh, minsan po, ilagay na lang po natin yung sarili natin sa sapatos ng ibang tao kasi minsan baka yung mga ginagawa natin nakaka din. So, respeto lang po sa mga palibot natin. And keep safe to everyone and I, ho- I hope everyone is well. Uh, salamat gids ang inyong achimpo kang mayong gabi. Ayan. Thank you so much again, Attorney Alvarez, for joining us tonight and enlightening us about the Safe Spaces Act or Republic Act 11313. Napakaraming natu- naming natutunan ngayong gabi po. We'd also like to thank all our Zoom viewers and Facebook viewers for joining us and making this Park Conversations webisode a success. Please remember to, cha- to check your chat box in the comment section on our live video 
for the link to your digital certificate, as well as a quick survey which will help us at the National Parks Development Committee improve the quality of our shows and projects. If you enjoyed tonight's Park Conversations, ayan, do follow us on our social media accounts to stay updated with the other fun events we have lined up for this month. For Facebook and Instagram, it's npdc.ph. And for Twitter, it's npdc underscore ph. Again, thank you, everyone. And see you at our next Park Conversations.